So now we have the people from DISCON 3, the WorldCon for 2021. We decided to be different and not give you a video. <laughs> We uh, inquired about using our favorite scene from Many Hill. Unfortunately, we don't have the rights to use it, so we couldn't do it. We don't have the ASCAP rights to use Yakety Sax, so I can't do an interpretive dance. So instead, we're just going to talk. But not like James Bacon. <laughs> so we're going to take a moment here to highlight some of our uh, recruitment that's going on for the convention. Uh, we'd like to uh, take a few moments to uh, list out our, uh, because we don't yet have a committee list on our website, we'd like to uh, um, introduce our div division heads uh, and uh, we could ask them to stand uh, as we are very happy to introduce several fresh faces uh, to our committee. Um, our division head of program is Lisa Adler-Golden. And if you haven't seen her around, then you haven't been looking. Yeah, you haven't been looking. Um, Randy Shepard for exhibits. Michael Nelson for publications. Fred Bauer for tech. Rick Kowalczyk for operations. So for the people who aren't here, um, there are some fam very familiar names. Uh, we have a multi-generational fan, Jared Dashoff, who is running our WISPIS division. Uh, Gaddy Evron is running events for us. Brian, oh, sorry, Brian Nisbet, who is also not here, is uh, member and staff services. Um, those of you who work with Dublin are very familiar with Brian. Uh, one of our other new recruits is a convention runner from the Roanoke area of Virginia, Carla Brindle, who will be doing our outreach activities. So also good to bring in some new faces and that. Also here, we really like to take a moment to uh, Mark and TR, our, our facilities heads, they have in the back. There, there's, there's a little familiarity with, with them and uh, we are stealing them away from the State Department for a little while. And uh, we, um, facilities and uh, treasury will be in the chairs division, and our treasurer is Sam Shiner. So we are very happy that, uh, yes, he's keeping us in line already, seconds. and it's great. How many? 20. Well, then, we're going to do something different here. We're going to give you a moment of silence. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll take questions now. <laughs> As has been the case, if you have questions for the folks from Washington, let me see. The answer please is 42. Thank you very much. Please feel free to wave at, at our volunteers and they will bring paper and pen around. Um, so I'll ask the venue question that others have asked. Um, well, that others uh, had answered already. How many attendees do you think your, your facilities can support? 10,000. And what will you do if you exceed that number? <laughs> so, um, uh, our facility, um, currently we have the entire uh, Marriott Urban Park under contract, all of their space, all of their suites and rooms. We currently have half of the <coughs> Omni Shoreham directly across a side street. Um, we are, you know, depending on how. Uh, things look, we may consider contracting the rest of the Omni. And we would dance. Please, no dancing tonight. <laughs> We're singing. We're singing. Oh, man. Um, how many people do you think your city can support? <laughs> well, let's see, they have Awesome Con in the spring, which handles 30,000 plus people. Eh, you know, I don't think we have a problem. It's August. Uh, everybody else in D.C. will be gone, so there'll be plenty of, plenty of room for everybody flooding in. Congress is typically out of session, which is why we got the good rates that we did. So what are you most excited about 
about your convention at this point. Working with Colette, of course. <laughs> we are very excited to bring the Worldcon back to the East Coast for the first time since 2004. Uh, we are very uh, excited about the energy that we are receiving from the local fans uh, who are very excited to not only attend, but to also work on it and volunteering their ideas. And on a serious note about that, um, <laughs> not that working with Clut isn't great, um, we are really excited about the three-way race that's developing for 2023 because they're going to bring a lot of different things and people to our convention, and it's going to make it very worldly. I mean, you have China, France, and Memphis. Those are great locations, great cities, and they're going to bring a lot of energy and people to our convention. Yeah. So how can we be the most helpful to you right now? And answer our calls. Uh, many have. I mean, pretty much everybody has, and thank you very much. Um, bring us your ideas. Uh, we are looking, um, you know, we, we are very fortunate to have not very, not hugely expensive uh, <coughs> venues, so we are looking to really be able to get uh, creative uh, with, like, with exhibits and with programming and things like that. Please bring us your ideas. Even if it seems crazy, it might be possible you know, for us. Uh, the thing I have to say that I'm most excited about is we are a Wednesday to Sunday convention. Um, sadly, LA took away the opportunity for us to do the Retro Hugos. So instead, we will be hosting a local author creator reception on Wednesday evening to introduce our people to the attendees of World Town. So you're um, administering the 2023 site selection, um, particularly for um, a, a vote that contains European voters as well. How are you ensuring the privacy of voter information? Uh, under what standards? Uh, Europe, for the most part. Well, well okay, EU then. Um, we will probably, we will most likely follow the guidance well laid out by Dublin 2019 when they conducted ours. Because having been on that committee, I, be, I watched the gyrations that they went through to be able to get, it, to get it right. And so they set an excellent model for us. Cool. What's your biggest stress point right now? Me. <laughs> <laughs> how, how can we help you fix that? I don't think we want that on the recording. <laughs> we'll talk later, Stephen. No, in, in serious, uh, continuing to volunteer, offer ideas, those are the things that are gonna help us most. And of course, well, there's that whole thing of signing up to come to the World Cup. Um, that always helps. Um, we, our, our big stress of point is always to make sure that we're staying on schedule and our talk with Bobby uh, yesterday was of great help to realize that we were keeping things on track for most part and that we will stay on track going forward. Uh, there's somebody over there writing something curiously. Any other Can they be writing something happily maybe? <laughs> if you have. Do you have useful questions? Nope. We so still have four minutes. So. so we have some great things we can talk about, too. Um, for those of you who like to have the occasional drink, there is an amazing gin bar just below the Hill Hotel. So Helen Montgomery can tell you great stories about that gin bar. Um, it is, we, were, we will leave it to Helen. Nobody can be as enthusiastic as Helen, so we have especially for gin. Excuse me, I'm going to stop you because this is not presentation time, this is question time. Mm -hmm. There was a um, question about alcohol, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, there wasn't. Is there any information that you have at this point about child care and children's programming and things like family rates? Uh, we will have a family rate. We don't have it completely firmed down yet, but it will be by the end of the year. Uh, we will have um, four 
basically uh, uh, for uh, we will have paid babysitting and childcare available. Uh, we will have children's programming, and the complete the precise details are in our FAQ. But we do not have a specific requirement um, for children to be out of certain areas by certain times uh, in a, in our venue. The, 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 we wrote it out precisely there, so please go read that. And of course, one of the things we'd like to do during the child or children's programming, team programming, is to organize some tr uh, at least one trip to the National Zoo, which is four blocks away. So if they walk up to the zoo, they walk around the zoo, they walk back, they get tired. <laughs> All parents, you're welcome. So how many um, attending members do you currently have? I apologize. We can't. We, uh, if you could come and ask us at our table tomorrow, um, they <laughs> two and a half. Sorry. It's, it's, it's greater than three. Greater than three. Will there be any provision for refunds for non-U.S. attendees who cannot come due to the new U.S. laws? That, as stated in our uh, in the travel information that has is posted on our website. We have the data there, and we state clearly before we were seated that if the, somebody requests a visa letter from us, we give it to them, and they are not approved, that we will refund their membership to whatever level they want. If they want to go down to supporting or go to or want a full refund, we will give it. Of course, we hope that is not an issue for anyone, but we recognize it can't be. Thank you all very much.